Hey everybody, it's me Kelly. I'm gonna try a talk over because um, everybody likes to, when I get on the camera and talk I get so many beautiful messages so I thought okay I'm gonna try to talk through this figure if it doesn't work then I will just put music on it. So I'm doing The Bride of Frankenstein and as you can tell I'm having a heck of a time with the, her face because I want it to be a little bit pointed but I don't want it um, too pointy if that makes sense and so I'm doing the eyes now and then I see what kind of you know chin that was I don't know I don't know what I was thinking so I'm putting in her eyebrows now and you guys should really try to draw it is you know it, it, even if you feel like you're not really good at it because I'm not good at it I just love doing it and as you can see here the way it starts out, as I always say, is never the way it ends. Because it's not going to look like this when I end. I'm happy with the final result. I really am. Um, I hope my daughter likes it because I've been giving them to her. Um, so I am happy with it. But at least drawing gives you, um, even though it changes at the end, it gives you... Um, an idea you know what I mean and as you go along you say oh I want the lips smaller lips bigger this color that color um, and I'm just doing her hair now and then I realized we're not doing a were those called flat tops from kid and play back in the 80s um, so I forgot I figured oh okay how am I gonna fix that oh well you bring it down some so I brought it down to the size of her face as you can see still not happy with that chin but we'll get there later then I'm deciding on what I'm going to do if just put her with a neck and um, just some shoulders and all and just kind of leave it at that and make it the basic picture. So um, again, playing with the face. You will see I do that all the time. Never be afraid to draw. I just got a request. Um, I get requests daily to, to draw. Um, so I just, somebody else had asked me again um, today to draw for her. So I wrote her and asked which one does she want? Does she want a regular face? Does she want, you know, whimsical face or whatever? Um, I draw a certain, I have a certain way to draw. I don't know if it's any technical kind of thing or not. Um, here, like when these long pauses come, I'm looking for markers <laughs> or whatever. I, I like to be, I like to be coloring with my, to be coloring with. I've been trying to color with markers more. So, um, this is something you can do, or even colored pencils. This is something you can do and just sit in your bed, um, or on the couch or whatever. Um, very simple. Just draw whatever you want. And right now I'm just using, um, I grabbed a gray marker and I'm doing her hair. And I'm tracing now. You can see I'm not very, I'm not a very technical person. I don't, you know, I don't follow rules very well. I just love to draw. And some things I'm better, like like my last Frankenstein one, my little Franken boy, wasn't real thrilled with him. Um, he was cute and all, but it wasn't one of my favorites. So now I notice on the um, computer that I wasn't as close as I wanted to be. It's hard because I have to move, I think I might this weekend move my camera to the opposite side because I realize that because I'm right-handed, my right hand obviously gets in the way when I'm filming because my camera's on the right-hand side. Now she kind of looks like she has a mud mask on, kind of. Well, maybe an algae mask. But, um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play around with different um, places uh, where my camera is um, going to go. So when I do things, um, my hand's not in the way so you guys can see. So now you can see I'm just coloring her in with a green marker. That was a, a pro marker, but you can use Crayola. You can use whatever you want. Color pencil, crayons, Crayola markers, whatever. I just grab whatever I have sitting here, and those happen to be on top because I've been using them. And now I'm just doing her eyes. I love Sharpie markers, too. The colored sharper, Sharpie markers, fantastic. And they're permanent. They're alcohol-based. So they're basically the same as Copics in a way. And you can make alcohol inks and all, too, from them which is really cool. And I'm just doing her little eyes. I go over her um, face quite a bit. 
Now what I do is after I draw, I go over and erase. And although most of the time, because of the alcohol-based markers, the pencil lines will stay underneath. I really don't care on these too much because I'm not selling them and they really just are for my daughter to have. Um, but, uh, well, my phone's gone off, sorry. Um, okay, you can stop now. You can stop. Don't know what that is. Um, but, uh, I just lost train of thought. You see what happens? When I get, um, oh, what was I saying? Oh, so you can erase, uh, one of the tricks, and I've showed this, and I've given it as a tip also, when I do draw something out, I will usually take my eraser and erase all the lines until it's just a very, very faint line underneath, almost not even there, and then go over and color it, because then you can still follow your pencil lines, but they don't get, um, you know you won't be able to see them when you're done like i said on this one i happened not to and um no big deal like i said you know i just had a ball just sitting doing this and now i'm just doing her little eyebrows and those are the fabric castell um, markers which i love 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 um really if you want a good permanent marker i mean sharpies are very um, inexpensive and great these ones come in four different sizes, four, four or five different sizes. And I love them because you get very fine to very thick. And I love it because you can really use it for detail work as I'm doing on here. Um, I'm using the bold one, not the big pro brush bold, but it's just the bold regular fabric style and then the medium one. The medium one I'm using for like finer lines, which actually I have to go buy a new one because it's dying. I use it so much. But they're so great. They come in a plastic pouch and you can just carry them everywhere. And they're permanent. I usually hit them with heat um, to make sure that they are permanent and all the way dry and not just sitting inside the paper because they'll saturate in a little bit and smear unless you dry them. Um, you can use a hair dryer too. You don't always. The only reason you need a heat gun is to emboss. So if you just want a um, something so you can help dry your paint or set your markers or whatever, hair dryer works perfectly. It can help with your paints and everything. So you don't need to go buy a heat gun. You can just use your hair dryer, which I do quite often. Um, it just so happens that my heat gun um, is set here. I don't even emboss that much which I should because I have all the stuff, but um, I, I'd like to use that more in my art. I used to use it a lot. I just don't, I don't know why. I'm going to be use, moving my art room again. I'm going to, we've decided we're going to, because our bedroom's on the other side. So we decided that we're going to redo this room down here, which is my painting room right now, for, and make it our bedroom, and make our bedroom that's, in the next room my daughter's because it's like five times as big as her bedroom upstairs and then I'll take that as my arts art and craft room where I'll put my um, sewing and all my stuff up there so everything will be in one room because I want to film some different things and uh, and then I'll have a spare bedroom for when people come and visit or if anybody needs a place to crash and live I'll have a new room I'll have a spare room and now I'm just going with my green, going over the face again, just to give it more of a green look. When you first, oh my gosh, when you first, um, my phone won't stop. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and it's so annoying. Um, when you first go over with the pro markers, and I'm sure it's the same with the Copics or any alcohol marker that you're using, as you can see, it looks like it gets darker and that it's almost uneven. But once it dries, it looks perfectly normal, which is funny because I'm not perfectly normal, but you know, but I really love the way this one came out. I really did. I was really pleasantly surprised because I was going back and forth on this one and a different one to do. And I thought, oh, I'm going to do this one. And I almost don't want to give it to my daughter, but I am. And now I'm deciding on what color to do the um, background. And I am using the Artist Lofts. It's Artist Loft, and it's neon pink. Pink, neon, neon, pink, whatever. 
I really, I bought this. They were on sale. I wanted, everybody is like doing the fluorescent. And I have a few fluorescent colors, um, but not many. And I really, excuse my arm. Um, I really wanted to get, you know, these fluorescents. And these were on sale two for $3 or two for $5. Um, I believe at Michael's. Michael's or AC. I think it was Michael's. I don't know. I mentioned it in a video a while back. And I like these. However, I don't like the coverage so i don't know if the more expensive ones um have better coverage than this now maybe if i did let this dry and did another coat over it it would cover way better but um i don't like the first coverage on it it's kind of transparent in a way and i really don't dig that it, if you can see in the one corner you can see kind of waves and stuff from where my paintbrush was and it works for this um but I might just buy an expensive one just to see what it's like instead of going and buying tons because they might just be the formula of the fluorescent anyway so i don't know 